Hey everybody, today we're going to create your first page layout in InDesign and we're going to recreate this zoo page here. Who's new at the zoo? This is going to be a practice for your final project. In the lessons file in the server, Digital Photo Lessons, there's a file called Zoo Page and you'll find a, a folder of animal photos. You'll find the tutorial in written form and you'll see an example of the page that we're about to create. All right, first thing we need to do, let's go into InDesign. It's the pink box down on your dock ID, or it's in your launch pad in the Adobe apps. Uh, right here, in Adobe InDesign. All right, let's click on it to begin. When you get in there, you're gonna create a new document. And when it pops up, we're gonna change the unit to pica, from picas to inches. And we're going to change the width to 11 and the height to 17. We're also going to add columns to the page. So down here we're going to add six columns and then say create. So you're going to have a really big piece of paper with six columns on it. Okay, so here's what your page is going to look like. Now I grabbed my toolbar off the side and again, a lot of times you'll see it as a long skinny strip, but there's this little double arrow here at the top. Click it so it doubles it up because it'll make things easier to find later. Okay, first thing we got to do when we look at our example page is we want to create the dominant photo. The dominant is the biggest picture on your page. And when you look at the example, We've got a big picture right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by drawing our photo boxes. And I'm gonna just double click on this to have it open so we can get to it a little easier later. All right, the box with the X. This is a, a photo frame box. And we're gonna take the big one and we're gonna start in this upper left corner and we're gonna go across four columns, something like this. If you decide it's too big or too small, grab it with this dark arrow key. You can resize it. You can move it around, just kind of grab onto it. You can grab the corners to make it bigger or smaller. Now these double lines on the page, they're spacers. So you want to stop at the edge of these double lines so that things are lined up evenly. When you look at the example, these lines here, that's what these column lines are right here. So we want to, to take a look at this. This column on our example page right here is empty. It's, it's saved for text. So then the next photo, we're going to draw another box, the box with the X. That one's going to come across two columns. We're going to, and we can bring it down. You can decide if you're going to take it all the way to the bottom or not. The next one was just the little guy on the leaf. And then we had one that went this way. I would try to line them up with each other. So like if I, again, if I need to re-align, um, oops. And if you make a mess like I did, just hit delete and click on anything and hit delete. I'm just going to grab that line and drag it down so they're even with each other. And then I've got one more here and this one. I'm not going to save room with this text. I think I'm just going to fill it with a picture box. So again, the box with the X, take and draw that out. And one last one at the top. Okay, once you have your boxes drawn, we need to put something in it. And the way that InDesign works is you click on the box that you want to select. It's got the points going around. So I've selected my big box and I'm going to place something in it. So I go to File at the very top where it says InDesign, Place, so File, Place, and where is it? Here it is. And we got to find our photos. So the default, it takes you to the desktop, but if you go over here in the left column where it says shared CL Mac, that's our server. So you just click through journalism, digital photo lessons. Here's the zoo page. All right. Now, when I get in here, if you want something that looks like the example page, because the example had this big eel, the best eel picture I could find was this one. So if you want to use it, fine. But I would pay attention to the shape of the box. This is a tall vertical photo. So something like this would work. Uh, the giraffe would work, but this guy is not going to work in that box because he's the wrong shape. I'll just stick with the eel. So I choose what I want and I say open. 
Now it's not fitting very well, so I have to go to Object, Fitting, and I only choose the top one or two. Uh, I choose the proportional fit. Let's try fill the frame proportionally. There it is. Now what you'll notice is a little circle in the center, and if I hold my mouse, you can see there's a little bit of the photo that's left outside of the, the parameters of the box. You can adjust it a little bit, so that circle is going to allow you to move the picture inside of the frame. Okay, so then once you've got the first one set, then click on the next box, File, Place. The shortcut for the keyboard is Command D like dog. That will take you right back into the folder that where we were, and we'll just start placing some pictures. Again, they're probably not going to fit, so you've got to go to Object, Fitting, and fill the frame proportionally. And then just continue to go until you filled all of your boxes. And again, pay attention to the shape of the photo. So this wide photo is probably going to work better down here than in this tall one. So I've got to find something that's a little taller to go in that space. All right, I'm going to continue to fill in my boxes, and then I'll come back and show you how to do your title. OK, once you've got your pictures placed, now we've got to start looking at the text on the page. And if you look at the example, we've got a headline that says, Who's New at the Zoo? The trick for headline design is that each one of these lines is in a separate text box. It will allow you to resize them separately, to align them differently from each other. It makes life a little easier if you make these separate text boxes instead of one ginormous box. You'll notice um, over here along the side, you'll see caption space. Here's a little caption space here. You could, if you've saved a little room, create text boxes down here, or a lot of times what people will do is they'll take a little text box, so like let's draw out one right here and put like a number one. Now it's black text, so I've got to, if I come to my swatches, I can click on that and change the color of it. Also probably want to make that a little bigger. So when I'm in a text, um, on the text tool, here's my sizes. So I could make that a little bigger number and just kind of drag it to where I want. So you could number your boxes and then come down here. And then I want you to actually write the caption. So I want you to write like number one, Amore Eel greets visitors at the zoo. Or whatever you want to say. So I want you to write a, a caption for the photo. Let's do the headline. So what I would do is start with drawing a big text box. And since that one is going into the mouth of the eel, we can kind of do the same thing. I'm going to get a, I'm going to write who's new. Now again, it's awfully small. I can't see it. I'm going to make that a lot bigger, maybe like 36 points. If that's not big enough, I'm going to take it and change it. I'm also going to change the font. So with this project, there's a font that I like to use called Hobo, and if I hit the H button, it takes me to that part of the alphabet for my font list. And there's a, a font called Hobo Standard, and it, it actually just is kind of a roundy, fun font. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make it like 60 points. Now the color right now of my text is still black. If I highlight it, I can double click right here on this T, and I can change it to whatever color I want. So if I wanted to change it blue, I could do that. Another fun thing to try is if you get your eyedropper tool, you can select a color in your photo. So let's select the same color as the eel. You can see it here. And this loads up like a little highlighter. And as you sweep over it, it allows you to change the color of your text. All right, let's take another text box. The words at the are not too exciting, so I'm going to keep them smaller. I'll make those 60. Uh, the, the big one is 60 points, so these will be 30. And I'll change that back to the hobo font. And the last text box, I'm just going to... Sometimes you just drag them off from the side and then move them where you need them to go. All right, for this one, I'm going to change the font and then make it really big. So I'll take it like to 72 points. And again, if you're trying to match the color, I'm just going to get that eyedropper tool. Oops. Oh, 
I want to make sure that I am selecting the color and if you mess it up, just hit um, just hit the command Z button. You can also change change it like this by clicking on the I just clicked on the, um, the previous color. All right, with your arrow key, move them around so that they are aligned with each other. You can get them closer to each other. All right, so we've got our headline. If you want to see what it looks like without all these lines, down at the bottom of your toolbar is a preview button. And if you click it, all the lines disappear. You can also use the W key to toggle back and forth down here between those. So if you want to see what it's looking like. All right. Last couple of things. Let's get a text box. I want to put my lines back on so I see where I'm at. I want to keep everything inside these lines. I'm going to draw out a text box and I'm going to put some fake writing because I want it to look like a story. So for this, I'm going to go to type at the very top and towards the bottom, you'll see something that says fill with placeholder text. All that is, is a bunch of fake writing, but it shows me what my story will look like if when I get it in there. All right, when I click on this box, I'm going to hit Command B like boy. And what that's going to do is give me a text frame option so I can change the number of columns. And if you hit the preview button, you can see what that's doing. It's just put them in columns. This little red tab here shows me that there's more text than I can see. So if I stretch it down, so my text frame, there's more in there. With fake writing, I don't care too much, but if it was a real story, I'd want to make sure I could see all of my text. You can use your up, down arrow keys to nudge things up and down also. In this space, I'm going to get one more text box, and I think I'll just draw it out over here just so it makes it a little easier, and put um, page by and put your name, and then drag it into the spot. So just Again, anytime you want to move something, use the arrow key. Anytime you want to type something, use the typing tool, the, the T button. So if I want to make this bold, I want to highlight this. I can come over here where it says nice. It says my font is Minion Pro, but right underneath this, this is where I'll see my bold and um, italic options, depending on the font. Not all the fonts do that. If I'm on this font, you only have one option, so I can't make that bold, but this one I can. All right, so then the only other thing that you would need to do is continue to come in here with making little text boxes and write a caption for each photo. I want you to caption every photo and uh, have a headline, a byline, your story. If you want to make this kind of fancy, here's another fun trick that you can try. Take this capital letter and um, let's see, I think it's this one up here, the drop cap. If you increase the size, like from two, two lines down or three lines down, you can make that initial letter bigger. That's up here. It's called a drop cap. So that's basically it. I'm going to use my command zero to back out. Command plus zooms in, command minus zooms out, and command zero will show you the full screen. And that's your zoo page. Save it when you're done. Go to File, Save As, and make sure you're putting it into the Mac server in the digital photo files, and hit Save. You are done.